for the spiral ribbon, we're gonna start with what you would expect is a corkscrew. So go ahead and create a corkscrew on your paper. Pretty easy. second try, I like that corkscrew a little better. Okay, we will be checking the worksheet, so make sure that you are following along. Okay, I am going to do another sketchbook, or not, it's not the worksheet, but I'm going to check your sketchbooks one more time, so do make sure that you are following along. All right, um, just like our other ribbons, we after we start at the line, we draw down um, lines from the widest points. So we're gonna do that again. This time the corkscrew ribbon gets confusing because there are overlapping parts. There's overlapping parts to this that make the corkscrew ribbon slightly more confusing than our cinnamon bun ribbon or our dancing ribbon or we also did some banners. So those were a little less complex, I think. This one might be the most complex of the ribbons. So again, I'm starting from the widest point of all the curves. And I'm, you don't need to draw two, I just have two on here. And I'm drawing down from these widest sections of the ribbon the very widest points of the curve. And it's important to try and make the lines, these little lines, all the same length, because that is the width of our ribbon. So if you have some that are tiny, tiny short lines and some that are really long, then your ribbon width is gonna be changing, okay? And we don't want that because the ribbon width should remain the same thickness the whole time. Okay, again, shout out. If I'm going too fast, I won't be able to check the chat while I am, while I'm working. So if you're writing things in the chat, just, um, oh, very good. I see Evelyn can see our screen now. Excellent. Um, just unmute yourself and shout out if you have a question, want me to repeat something, or if I'm going too fast. Now, we're gonna start, we have a back side and we have a front side of the ribbon. So the back side is what swoops around the back and the front side is this point that, that wraps around the front. We are gonna start for consistency with all the front sides of our ribbon. And again, the bottom of the ribbon has to mirror the top edge of the ribbon. Now, as that curves around, you don't want any pointy sharp corners. So if you see a pointy sharp corner, erase it, okay? So we're just gonna start by trying to replicate this curve right underneath here. See, that's a pointy sharp corner. We want to eliminate those pointy sharp corners because ribbons have nice curves to them. Trying to replicate that curvature as I bring that bottom line of the ribbon around. Now, all these little lines here, 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 and here, the ribbon is not clear, it's not see-through, so we're gonna erase those points 
because we don't need to see that part. So I'm just erasing those little lines. So now our ribbon has a clear front side to it. And it looks almost done, but it's not. It's not almost done. We have to create the back side of the ribbon that we see behind, okay? So I'm gonna give you a few minutes to catch up. If you are drawing at home, uh, you know, and you're going a little slower, I'm gonna give you a few minutes to catch up. I will just do a second one while you continue. And so you can see me do it twice while you are drawing at home, following along. Again, we don't want any pointy corners. So we're gonna be really careful about that. And we're gonna make sure that we are mirroring that curve exactly as best we can. Now this end can have a corner on it here and here, the ends of the ribbon, because they are um, straight edges there. Again, erasing these lines because that front of the ribbon is not see-through. Okay, so at this point, everyone drawing at home should have caught up with me or mostly, I'm gonna move on to the back side of the ribbon. The top is easy, we just go, you know, and try to replicate that curve there. Okay, when we go here, we have to keep in mind this is the thickness of our ribbon. So if this little, like right here, right here, this tiny tight spiral, you're not gonna see the bottom edge because it's so narrow in there. If we have a wider spiral, we might see the bottom edge of the ribbon so you have to kind of gauge how wide your spiral is and estimate, okay, am I gonna see any bit of that back part of the ribbon? I think for this one, I will see a tiny bit of it, okay? So I'm going to draw just that little edge of it through there, okay? This is very narrow. I might see just barely any of it, okay? I might not see the, any of that one, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna see what it looks like with that edge in there. This one, I'll definitely see some of this, this part of the ribbon. Okay. Ooh, we're getting a complete spiral. We're building it. I can see it now. Again, we're looking at that top edge and we're making sure the new edge that we create mirrors that curve. Okay, so we're trying to replicate with a, a parallel edge to the top line there. Okay. Maybe it looks a little thin back there. Maybe I'll make it a little wider. So there you have it. 
our spiral ribbon. Ta-da! Okay, so as you might wanna see me do this a second time, I will do this other ribbon over here, even though the spiral is not quite as pretty. I will do, finish this one up too. Now with this guy here, I don't think I'm gonna see the bottom edge. I think it's gonna be kind of hidden by this one. So you kind of have to gauge your spiral. If this opening, this ellipse here is so narrow, that you're not gonna see the bottom edge of this ribbon, like it might be kind of like, like that, then don't, don't draw it in. A lot of little adjustments. So if after you draw in the ribbon, you think, well, that doesn't quite look right or that edge, just make a slight adjustment. Usually we'll fix it up. Okay. Now we think about our light source. Where is our light source coming from? We determine where the light source is, and typically on a spiral, the inside back there is going to be darker than the front of the spiral. So that makes it a little easier for me. I'm gonna come in here and I'm just gonna simply make this inside part of my ribbon a little darker, give it some shading. Okay, and then with that, actually after we shade all of these back sides of our ribbon, it's gonna make our spiral look even more three-dimensional and even more like a curly spiral. So we're gonna get the effect to really pop. So let's go ahead and keep adding that shading to our ribbons. I'm gonna try to make that edge stand out a little more on this one where the ellipse is so tight in here.
All right, the back, uh, this one I'll do a little bit of shading on too, but we're almost done here shading the back of the ribbon. When I'm done, the next thing that I consider is usually around the curves um, and corners, there are, you know, there's a little, usually a little more shadow around curves and, and corners of things. As our form, the ribbon itself, bends, there's typically going to be slightly a little bit more shadow at the bend of the ribbon. So that means that and here I drew this back edge nice and dark I started getting darker as I was building and that kind of helps I might darken some of these because when we talk about shadows two shadows kind of being close to one another and we need to create a dominant shadow one that is darker than the one next to it so that we have um, some differentiation between the areas of our drawing. If I'm gonna create some shadow right on this edge as it moves around here, but this shadow back here is not significantly darker than my shadow in front of it, then I'm gonna start losing the three-dimensionality of this ribbon and um, it's not gonna pop as much. So if I push, one shadow to be darker, then I show it, it helps the eye to work and, and, and see the form a little bit more clearly. Okay, so back here, this is a lighter shadow. I'm actually gonna darken it up so that it dominates over the shadow next to it, which is the front of the ribbon, okay? So creating a nice bold shadow will help so that you have a tonal range to your drawings, right? You don't want everything to just be mid-tones. You want the darkest darks and the medium grays and the white of the papers too, okay? And sometimes the whole ribbon will actually be shaded very faintly with just some erased out highlights too. So you think about that could also be, you can really push your shading um, and then even create some erased out highlights, but we're not gonna get that detailed with our shading today um, because we're just doing some demonstrations. But when you guys are gonna go in to draw your final draft ribbon drawings, you really want to accentuate the value throughout your ribbons. It is one thing that I'm really gonna be looking for is the shading of your ribbons and you can use smooth valuing, you can use stippling, you can use cross hatching, hatching, um, any type of shading technique you want to create your light and shadow. So near these curves of the ribbon, as the ribbon curves back, I'm just giving it a little bit of shadow there And I think that, that that'll do it. Ta-da, a spiral ribbon.